Sean asked me to since he's gone. So let's see, uh, Jesse, what's the definition of a circle? Um, it's a set of all points in plane at a given distance from a given point. What is it, Cal? Uh, I'm just going to use the microphone. It is. What's the definition of a circle? Uh, what did she say? Uh, Sean, what's the definition of a circle? It's a set of points on a plane yeah, from a given distance from a given point. Yeah, it's pretty good, Mike. Um, point, points, set of points, or whatever. The set of all points, points, or we could call it the locus. Okay. Set of all points um, that are equal distance away from the point. Austin, is that right? <coughs> On a plane. So when you get your quizzes back, you guys, uh, the way you're talking is the way you were writing. That doesn't, you got to be really clear and concise. It's the set of all points in a plane. I think we have it here. Oh, it's gone. Good. No, I, it was working good in the other class. So. Oh, well, I had it paid in, but I'll have to write it. So the set of all points in the plane, I must have um, erased it. Ooh, and now I have to write it for it. So the set of all points, which is a, also could be said the locus. Equidistant in a plane, right? Oops, almost made a mistake. I know, it happens. From a given point, which is called the center. So if you think about it, one big misconception, if this is my center point A, and I pick up my compass, and I construct my circle. This is the circle, you guys. The center is not part of it. If I asked you to take a highlighter and highlight a circle, if you highlighted the center, you would be incorrect. The circle is like a ring. Okay, it's a common misconception that the center is part of the circle. So that's not very hard. Let's look at these terms. Okay, Miranda, what's the chord? In this picture, first, give me an example. Let's start with that. Line segment UN. Line segment UN, good. Okay, so that's a chord right here, right? So it's a line segment UN. So the symbolic notation is that. Oh, that reminds me. For a circle, the symbolic notation is a circle symbol with a capital letter. That's circle A. That's how you read that. Are you with a dot on the yeah, Yes, that's with a little that, dot. I know. Is. Even though the circle, yes, because otherwise I think it would look like an O. That's probably oh, why. Oh. So your book uses that once in a while. You know, sometimes it'll say circle O. It just depends. So, how would you define chord, Miranda? Uh, we might be, I'm not quite sure how to. So, classify it, it's a what? It's a line segment. It's a line segment. So, a chord is a line segment. Now, differentiate it. How is it different from other line segments? Think about the endpoints. Where are they? Not sure? That's okay, Krista. So we don't actually say at the edge, but it's the right idea. Jackson? The, the outside circle is out here. On the circle. Okay? It's just that simple. The chord is a line segment with endpoints 
on the circle. You don't need to say anything else. If it's a line segment with endpoints on a circle, it says it all, right? Because if I put two endpoints like U and O, and I want to draw a line segment, the only thing I'm going to end up with is a chord. So a diameter, so a chord can be the diameter. Okay. Hang on to that thought. Austin. So diameter is a chord, right? It's like so a diameter chord. is a chord, both of you, yes. So if we're going to do, so the diameter, most of you guys know, is UD, right, in this picture? Chord that passes through the middle. That, so what's the middle called, though? Circle. Right. So a diameter. Is a chord. You use. Remember, it's like when we were doing the circ, the squares or the rectangles. The, just get to it. A diameter is a chord. That's how we classify it, but we differentiate it because it contains. The center of a circle. Can you say that passes through the center point? Yes. The center of the circle, yeah. It passes through the center of the circle. It's the same thing as it contains. Does that make sense? So we're classifying it and then we're differentiating it. So, Luke, what's the radius in this picture? Um, the radius in this picture is. Um, Oh, uh, NR. NR would be one of the radii in this picture right here, right? Yes. So what is it then? Um, is the radius a, uh, a line segment that right. goes... It's not a chord anymore, right? So right. a radius... It's a line segment <coughs> that goes from center point to the outside of the circle. Okay, connecting. Oh, yeah. On the circle. A point on the, on the circle, right? Yeah. To the center. All right, and let's just in a little bit. What's the tangent line, Michael? The tangent line is a line that passes. So where is it in the picture? It's the one that points down. Oh, yeah, so I need another letter. So how about B? So B is tangent line. And a tangent, a tangent line is a line that does not pass all the way through a circle, but passes through a point on the circle. We can do more concise right concept, okay? Tangent line is a line that... It's a line. A line. Right. That um, connects a point on the circle to a point outside of the circle. No, because look, is this a tangent line right here? Um, well, here's a point on the circle and here's a point outside. But never passes through Well, if it connects, it's a good, okay, if it connects a point on the circle to a point outside the circle, how? Okay, so how can we say that? But it doesn't pass through, so Spencer. It's a line that meets one point on the circle. Intersects the circle in exactly one point. one point. Because even though it looks like this intersects the circle in one point, remember lines go on forever. Even if they're not drawn that way, it's a line. Those arrows imply forever. So it has to be... Tangent, to be tangent, it can only intersect once. So a tangent line is a line right, that intersects 
a circle exactly once. Okay. So, so just to make sure I understand that um, it's it can't go into the circle like uh, the the line that we've been using as an example because it would have to intersect another time to get out of the circle. This line right here, right, this right. one that's green, because it has arrows on it, it's a line, so it implies that it goes on forever. Right. So right. And Even it would have to intersect it again to get out of the circle. Right. Quick. Okay, so I have a question about the green line. The green line, yes. Yeah. Um, what would that be? Because it's it's kind of like a it, it's kind of like a chord. It is. It's, it's called the secant line. It doesn't come up much in geometry, but it does come up a little bit later. A secant line is a line that contains a chord. Yeah, but that's, yeah, exactly. that's how you would define it. Oh. And therefore, it would intersect the circle twice. And OU is a chord. And OU is a chord. So every chord is part of some secant line. Sabrina. Um, so for a tangent line, you don't need to say that there's like points on it? Just... No, a line is an infinite set of points. So a tangent line is a line that intersects the circle exactly once. Michael, and then Austin. So a relationship between a chord and a diameter is pretty much between a square and a diameter. Right. So the chord is a subset. Uh, I mean, the diameter is a more specific chord, like a square is a more specific rectangle. Every diameter is a chord, but only some chords are diameters. So a diameter is like a subset of the chord. Like yes, like rectangles and squares. Right. Okay, a little bit more. If you kept reading, there's minor arcs, major arcs, semicircles, and symbolic notation for those. Quinn. Well, I was going to say. Yeah, what's, give me one of them. What do you uh, D-O. D-O is what? An example it's of? A minor. a minor arc. So an example of a minor arc is D-O. Yeah. So... It, an arc is a part of a circle. That's all the definition of an arc is. It's a part of the circle. Because remember, a circle is just a ring, so if you took a part of it, you'd have an arc. Yeah, okay. could, could you also say um, a major arc is a minor arc? So a minor arc is less than half of a circle. Okay. okay, and a major arc is more, more than, than half of a circle, and a semicircle is half a circle. Does that make sense? Yes. Sabrina. Um, okay, so could a, ma could a major arc um, take you say like do D I mean O D U. So a major <laughs> arc could be O O. Like you said it the reverse. O D U? Absolutely. So O D U would be like, this major arc. Pardon me? And then you could just pass over the end. You would say ODU and you would pass over the end. In fact, that green arc that I just drew. I wouldn't you say O. Okay, hold on. So the major arc's in green. And that could be denoted. O and U have to be the endpoints. But it's kind of like some of the other things we've learned, like lines. ODU, can you see that back there? Morgan, should I scroll up and maybe go back to this? I don't know. Is that any? That's worse, right? Because we need the picture. Is that better? So ODU is the same as O and U. And the reason that is, is anytime you pick up, like, you know, if you trace, Right? If you trace O and U, it's going from O to U, but you have to pass through N. It's the exact same thing as O, D, U. Okay. So a major arc requires three letters, because if you didn't use three letters, you, could, you, could, you, you go yeah. always to the next letter in the most direct route as possible. So, so you would, 
you would go straight to you if it said oh you. Does that make sense? You would go the most direct route. Oh, okay. That's how you know. Quinn. So if it's a major arc, you go like that. If it's a major arc, you just, you follow the directions. You have to go from O to you, but you have to pass through that yeah, so letter in the middle. I know this, like, not, this is probably not going to happen, but like, even if it said, like, a major arc, and like, O to you, we're like, really close to each other. Um, I don't, Let's well, we'll keep going, and then if you can think of your question, ask me, Luke. Um, so what would you do then if like you only had O U and there was no D or N? Okay. So if I only had O U, let's clear this off a little bit. Then you you basically do exactly what you're told. You go from O to U, the shortest route. Okay. If they don't want you to go to the shortest route, then they'll tell you to do something else like, I want you to go from O to U, but you need to pass through N. So okay. you go this way. So That's like, the minor arc symbol and the major arc symbol is telling you directions. So you'll never like ask us to uh, draw major arc or like draw it an arc uh, from O to U, and there's no point D or N, but you want a major arc, you'll never ask that. Right. In fact, I won't even probably use terminal. I mean, I might not even give words. I might just say highlight and give this as the directions, and that tells you everything. If I say highlight and give you this, that's saying highlight the minor arc O U. Okay. If I said highlight this, that's saying highlight the major arc. Okay. Quinn. Will there ever be a problem where there are only uh, two letters? Two letters is a minor arc. Oh, so if there were only two letters in the picture, you wouldn't probably be asked to identify. Okay. You, you need, yeah. Okay. Exactly. And um, so it just, it's mostly for reading and once in a while for identifying, but if there were only two letters on the circle, then it wouldn't really be. Uh, Good question. There would be like a problem with the question. Semicircle. The reason it's it's exactly half the circle, and there's infinite number of arcs and minor arcs and major arcs and semicircles. But in this picture, it's easy to identify two different semicircles, but they have the same endpoint. So, for example, if I want to, so we have to use three letters because if I want to highlight this semicircle here. It starts at U and ends at D, but it's on the left side, so I have to put one in the middle, N, because it passes through N. If I want to highlight this semicircle here, then it starts at U, it goes through O, and still ends in D, so that's this one here. Okay. So it will tell you if it wants you to find a semicircle or a major arc. So like it will tell you. Okay. It's more about reading the book so you know what the heck you're reading. Sabrina. If it just says like find a semicircle, is it okay to put U D? Or do you have to No, because U D is the ambiguous. Which semicircle are you talking about? Okay. And then it doesn't matter if you say that just which one? Like, right. It's like they want to make it specific. Correct. You yeah. You, if they just said give a semicircle, then in this picture it'd be easy to give those two. If they, if you said U D, it would be incorrect because it doesn't clearly. It's too ambiguous to identify what part of the circle you're talking about. Okay, that should get you through the majority of um, the work tonight. But now I'm gonna ask you to bring up um, the sun. Uh, the, we'll do the quiz. How about we do the quiz next? Okay, and I know that Quinn, you didn't take it. Okay.